Well, good morning and welcome to our online service this first day of October. I can't believe that we're already in October. Where has 2023 gone? We are in touching distance of Christmas, which means the new year is on the horizon. Sorry for that not very cheery thought coming away. I do hope you're having a great morning, whatever you're doing, whether you're in bed with a cup of tea, whether you are later on in the day watching us, whether you have been up and about for a couple of hours already today, I do hope that you are having a great day. And it's wonderful to be able to welcome you into our online service from the parish of Wortley and Farley. My name's, the Chris, my name's Chris and I'm the vicar. It's great to be able to have you join us this morning. We do as we always do. We start with an acclamation and then we have our opening hymn. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In our first hymn this morning is All Creatures of Our God and King. So masterful and bright 
Blessings on our way. Oh, praise Him. Alleluia. The flowers and fruits that in thee grow, let them His glory also show. What a wonderful, uplifting hymn to begin our time with together this morning. I do hope you are singing heartily at home. We come now to our confession where we say sorry for the ways in which we fall short, the ways in which we are selfish, the ways in which we don't ask God to love, uh, the ways in which we don't love as God asks us to love. We confess our sin and the sins of our society and the misuse of God's creation. God our Father, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, Forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless and do not care enough for the world you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you life eternal. Amen. We now have our reading from the Bible, which is read for us this morning by David, and it's from Luke chapter 21, verses 1 to 4. It's only very short because you've got to pay attention. As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly, I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Wonderful. Thank you, David. Well, I wonder how much you like talking about money. We are coming to the end of Generosity Week. We've been uh, thinking about generosity all this week on social media, posting uh, reflection, um, a podcast that the Church of England has produced. Last Sunday, we thought about generosity. And this Sunday, we think about our response to God's generosity towards us, which often works itself out in money. We don't like talking about money much, do we? 
we find it perhaps an awkward or a difficult topic to think about. Maybe you think the vicar talks about it too much. They're always after my money. Um, maybe you have never thought about giving. Maybe you've been coming to church for years and you've never really considered how your money, how your giving and how God all go together. Maybe you're new to faith and you want to learn about this sort of thing. Maybe you're tuning in for the first time and you are completely new to church and to faith and all that kind of stuff. Well, allow this to inform you, but uh, please don't feel under any compulsion if you're new on the start of your journey to give. We need to talk about money. That's, that's one of the basic facts. Jesus is Lord of all life. He's Lord of everything. He's Lord of life and death. He is the firstborn over all creation. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He is all things were made for him and through him and by him. And all things means all things, as one Corinthian, uh, as Colossians 1 tells us. And money is a thing. Money comes under those all things. Jesus is Lord over money. Money was created through him and for him and by him. We need to think about money. Abraham Kupier, the Dutch theologian and one time prime minister, said there is not a square inch of all creation over which Christ does not cry mine. Our money is important to Jesus. We use money a lot. This morning you probably have uh, spent some money if you turned on your heating or turned on the lights in your house. There was a financial cost associated with that. It's the 1st of October. Maybe you have uh, subscriptions or direct debits or bills that come out on the 1st of October automatically. You will have spent some money. A couple of days ago, if you're in work, you might have been paid some money as it was payday for lots and lots and lots of people on Friday. Money is part of life. Money is part of our lives. And so money should be part of our discipleship, part of our journey with Jesus. And what we do with our money is something we need to think about in light of the gospel. And our passage from uh, the gospel of Luke this morning is really helpful to think about money because it teaches us a few things. Jesus is standing in the temple where people would give money. It would be quite a public, obvious showing, a real contrast to how we do giving in church. We pass around the plate and we try to subtly put in the cash. Uh, whereas uh, back 2000 years ago in Jesus' day, there would have been big kind of um, bowls that you would walk past and you would fling your uh, coins in because there were no notes. They didn't have folding money back in that day. So you would pour your coins in. You could hear the noise of the coins going in to the collection bowl, as it were. And so if somebody put a lot of money in, there would be a big noise when they put their money in. As it would, uh, all the coins would clash against the metal bowls. And if someone put a little bit of money in, you would know because it would just be a, a little tinkle rather than a big clash. And so Jesus is watching as the rich come along and put in their money, put in their offering, put in all that they have decided to give to God, the work of the temple. He says he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. The rich put in loads of money, whereas the widow puts in two small copper coins. And Jesus says, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. She's put in two small copper coins and they put in loads and loads and loads of dosh, loads of cash, loads of money. Jesus goes on, all these people gave their gifts out of their wealth. But she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had to live on. Jesus is saying that the widow gave so much more than the others. The, the rich gave out of their surplus 
from money that they don't really need to live on, uh, from savings, from securities, from all that kind of stuff, from their fattened bank accounts. They could have given £10,000, but £10,000 compared to a million pound bank account is not that much really. It's 1%. £10,000 sounds like a lot. And if you've got £10,000 to give to the church, I'm not going to say no to it. Please do give us £10,000. But the poor widow puts in two small copper coins, maybe two or four pence if we're comparing it to our debt money nowadays. But she has put in all that she had to live on. She has put in 100% of what she has. The rich might have given so much more, but percentagely they have given so much less. She has put in so much less, but percentagely, comparatively, she has put in so much more. Now, there are a few ways we could look at this. We could say, you've got to give everything you've got. You've got to give absolutely everything to church and survive on nothing. I don't think that is what this passage calls us to. It says in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 3, If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. If you give everything you have, but do it out of obligation, out of compulsion, do it because you should do, rather than because you want to out of love, it means nothing. You see, this verse coupled with this verse from Corinthians, verse coupled with our passage in Luke, helps us understand what's going on. It's not about the amount going in, but it's about where it comes from. It's not about the amount going in to the collection plate, but it's where it comes from. Does it come from a desire to show off like the rich would have done in our passage in Luke? Like it says in 1 Corinthians 13, that I may boast. Or does it come from the heart? Does it come out of love? Does it come because you want to? If you do not have love, you gain nothing. If you give everything without love, it means nothing. But if you give everything with love, it means something. You see, Jesus is more interested in our hearts than he is in the amount on the check. He is concerned with where our hearts are and where they're submitting and what they're worshipping than he is with the size of the check. Jesus wants our hearts more than he wants our money. Because quite often, our money tells us where our hearts are. The widow gives sacrificially. She gives everything she has for the worship of God. We too are called to give sacrificially. We don't give out of our what we can afford. We give sacrificially. We choose something to give and then we work out how to afford it. We don't spend everything and then give out of what we've got left. We give first and then spend the rest. She gives sacrificially. She gives without expecting anything in return. She's not expecting anything back. She's not expecting loud and honour from the people around her like the rich would have. She's not expecting special favours from the temple. She's just trying to worship God. She gives knowing that God does provide. She gives faithfully expecting that God would uh, take care of her every need. She gives with her whole heart. And this is the most important bit. She does it out of love. She does it because she wants to honour and worship God. And this is one of the most important things, this fourth point. She has planned what she is going to give. She would have had to have collected her everything. She would have had to have thought about it and considered it and intentionally done it. She would have had to have gotten over that moment to decide to put it in between the act of making the decision and the act of doing the decision. It's all very well and good to decide to go to the gym, but you actually have to go to the gym for it to make any good. It's all very well and good to decide to give to church, but you actually have to give to church for it to happen. And she has gone through that whole thing. She has decided what she's going to give. She's planned it and she's gone through with it. I wonder if you've ever thought about how you give, if you've ever planned how you give, if you've ever put it into your monthly budget, 
if you have ever added it as one of the first things that goes out from what you spend rather than one of the last things that gets missed quite often. We are looking at a £20,000 budget deficit next year in 2024 as a church, which means that we either stop doing things, we cut back, we have to dip into reserves which are set aside for building funds and for making the church building even better than it is, or we don't pay some bills. That's the three options ahead of us. We need to raise an extra £20,000. I want to tell you a quick story. We had our finance meeting where we discovered this last Tuesday. And so we prayed. We asked God to provide. We said, Lord, would you provide? Would you make a way forwards? Would you help us to work out how we are going to meet this deficit? On Wednesday, I came to church and I noticed there were letters in the letterbox. So I opened up the letterbox and there was a letter from the solicitors. It's not usually a good thing to get a letter from the solicitors, but as I read it, I discovered that somebody in their will had left us a legacy of £2,000. 10% of our budget deficit. We prayed on the Tuesday and God had answered our prayers on the Wednesday. God provides. I truly believe that God provides for us if we seek him in prayer. So would you pray? for the finances of the church? Would you pray for the financial life? Would you pray that God would provide, that he would meet our every need, that he would come through and help us to plug this budget deficit? But secondly, would you plan your giving? Would you give sacrificially? Would you give with your whole heart? Would you sow into the work of God in this place, in the parish of Wortley and Farley, that we might continue our online services, that we might continue our evening prayers, that we might reach out with the love of God further and higher and wider and deeper into the parish? You see, your money makes a difference. It means that we can run pancake parties and welcome in a hundred of the local kids. It means that we can run that Friday feeling on a Friday and welcome in a bunch of older folk who need a connection during the week. Your money means that we can run Messy Church and welcome in a bunch of kids who are engaging and meeting God in new and special and profound ways. Your money means that we can keep the building going and being a beacon of hope in the parish of Wortley and Farley. Your money releases me to go and uh, take assemblies in schools and to serve the community by being a chair of governors and by getting stuck in to everything else that is going on in the parish around us. Your money means that we can do so much stuff. Without it, we have to stop it. But with it, we can do more. I would love to employ a children's and families worker as we are bursting at the seams with kids. But we can't even think about that with our budget deficit. We'll need to be in surplus before we get there. Your money could make a real difference. So would you give sacrificially? Would you give in a planned way? Would you give with your whole heart? Would you give without expecting anything in return, but knowing that God will provide for you? He will meet you and bless you in your giving. There are a whole bunch of ways to give. The parish giving scheme is the best way to give. Uh, If you go on our website, workleyandfinallychurch.org.uk forward slash give, then you will find ways to set up the parish giving scheme. Otherwise, send us a message and we'll do our best to help you give. I want to close with some words from Sam Wells, the vicar of St Martin's in the field. If you don't give because no one's ever asked you, I'm asking you now. If you don't give regularly because you've never got round to it, I'm saying today's the day. If you don't give much because you think St John's Church and the parish of Wortley and Farnley doesn't need it, I'm telling you it does. If you don't give a lot because you don't have a lot, I'm saying you're giving something is an example to everyone else. If you don't give more because no one's ever said thank you, I'm thanking you right now. If you already give until the pips squeak, I'm saying that's wonderful and nudge the person next to you to do the same. If you give, thank you. If you don't, would you seriously consider it as a way of putting more and more of your life under the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Amen. Lord, I'm
presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Holy God, you have called us here today, and so as we gather, we offer to you our prayers, which stem from our love for you, and our love and concern for those we love and for the people of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, when the church joins together, we can show people a much fuller picture of Jesus and his kingdom. We pray for your church and the churches in our local community and ask that there will be a growing desire to get together and get out. We give you thanks for those who come up with fresh ways of making your name known to the wider community and pray that many would come to know your saving grace in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray not only for the victims, but for the perpetrators of evil and violence in our world. For all governments which run on corruption and fear, we pray for a change of heart and attitude, an awakening to a better way of living and the courage to reject wrong principles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, forgive us when we waste our lives by being too busy to enjoy your creation. Teach us how to make spaces in the day to do the things we most enjoy. Just as you rested from your work, help us to practice the discipline of recreation and help us to become your hands and feet in our streets so that our neighbours will one day ask us to tell them more about you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, help those we know to love and turn away from habits we are, which are harmful to them. Help them to turn to you in times of crisis, rather than reaching for quick fix solutions. Lord, we also bring to you those we know who are ill or suffering in any way. Give them healing and restore them in their body, mind and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, we remember in your presence all those who have died, and particularly those we have known and loved. Thank you for them, and thank you for your promise of eternal life and peace. Be close to those who are recently bereaved. Strengthen them with the knowledge that you are always there to lean on and to be carried through difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, at the start of this new week, help us to be an example to others and, to sh and show us the practical steps we need to take to develop consistency and integrity in all that we do in our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we join all our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Excuse me, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so our notice is, well, we've got a few things coming up that are a bit special 
on the 14th of October, we've got Messy Church from three till five. Uh, it'll be a harvest theme because on the 15th of October, the Sunday, there is our harvest festival at our nine o'clock and 10.30 services. We'll have a harvest themed online service that Sunday as well. Please do join us for that. If you would like to drop off uh, food items, non-perishable goods, tinned items and hygiene products, please do so and be donating them to the St George's Crypt in the centre of the city. For now though, we finish with our final song. Thank you so much for watching this week. Let me finish with the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you, turn his face towards you, shine his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you now and always. 